Okay. Yeah, we're just winging it. All right, so this is the B-Link Sir 6 uh, Max 6900HX turned into a cyber deck. So, long story short, took one of these boxes with a little mini PC inside, took it out, because who needs the box anymore? Now nah, I'm keeping the box. All right, and put it inside this. This is a cyber deck or glorified tablet that's extra chunk and thick. And yeah, this has like a bunch of speakers on the side. It's got very adorable antennas and please work. Yes. Okay. Turn on the screen. Oh, great. You guys can see me in the reflection. That's cool. Anyway, this is essentially a giant Windows tablet. Bingo. All right. Oh, great. You guys can see my name. Boo-hoo. All right. Um, hang on. I don't want to show you guys the password. Okay. We got the tablet. It's on. It works. It's got fingerprints all over it, because why not? Yeah, full Windows functionality. Cool. Um, all right. I just want to make this quick video to show how this thing kind of works. It's got Joy-Con rails, so you guys can see more pictures around it. It's got front I.O. plate. It's got a whole mess of HDMI cables. Up, well, a single HDMI cable up top. Top left, this turns off the screen, and the right turns on the Bluetooth speaker. Bluetooth mode. I... Successfully. I genuinely really hate that I lucked out and picked up the one Bluetooth speaker that talks to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it, it works. It's really loud when you max it out. Because I put four giant speakers on the back of it. Of course it would. And this is running a Ryzen 6900HX. For those of you not familiar, this is like one of those top processors back from 2022, released in 2023 because delays, and it's in a mini PC. It's got eight 18650 batteries, making like an 84 to 95 watt hour battery because power consumption watt hours varies when depending on the power consumption rate, and you can control it with a little tablet keyboard. It's nice, cute, small, fits the thing, and some of them actually have a trackpad, which is real nice connect live and there's a whole variety of these things some of them are like even led powered oh look at that you can see the little mouse dancing there okay and of course you can also grab one of these joy cons and slide them on if you got them left over from your nintendo switch and make it like a super jumbo nintendo switch because why not you gotta have fun somehow play some video games live a little bit anyways what in the world is inside of this thing? So, you got your mini PC. Put batteries on either end of it. Screen controller. Slap it on top. BMS. This is your battery management um, system. It protects the battery from overvolt and undervolt. So, it shuts it off if it detects, at least for this set, if it's getting under, like, 13 volts, shut down. If it's getting over 16.8 volts, uh, stop charging. It's very important to have this thing. This is an IP2368 module, and it facilitates all the charging. I, I really simplified this out. You just need these two modules connected to these batteries, and that connects to the barrel connector in the back of the mini PC, that thing, and that supplies power. The B-Link Sur 6 is one of those really rare mini PCs that works on 12 to 19 volts. It's not officially supposed to support 12 volts. It just happens to do that thing. That's awesome. So I can directly connect a 4S battery straight into the mini PC and not use up its very special USB-C port and use it for other random things like a USB hub. Yeah, that's so important. Anyways, the batteries essentially side by side in a giant U. You got one, two, one, two, Negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, okay? It's really as straightforward as that. 
is a 4S 2P configuration just wrapped around just to keep the balance of the machine. All right, so whoop, boom, that's a lot of battery and it weighs a little bit. So get, get prepared for that if you try to build this way. So if you have like a mini PC that needs to run on either 12 to 19 volts, this is great. Um, lot, mostly Intel Nooks, ASRock, um, 4x4 boxes and Nook boxes are the ones that I know are 12 to 19 volts supported, most of them. Other brands, you're going to have to experiment, so, okay. Anyways, so you got the BMS, battery management, that can, powers all of that. And if you want to break out some of the extra voltage lines from the BMS and in between here, you can break that out to power also the LCD screen. This beautiful 2K uh, touch screen. Yeah, IPS. Yeah, it's an IPS display. Uh, LCD, no AMOLED, maybe one day future. I, I do have some eyes on it, but they're expensive. Anyways, you hit. I really recommend you buy the screen and the controller together, okay? I, I've been mixing and matching with dozens of controllers and different screens, and it's just like, I might as well lose my mind because... You burn out one of those boards and you burn out one of those screens and then you're playing the guessing game to find a working combination. Nightmare. So just buy the set together. Works. You may need something like this to provide 5 volts for the controller. Um, this is just a step, simple step-down converter. Takes anything from, if I remember right, 5 to 24 volts and steps it down to 5 volts. There's a little potentiometer on the end right here. You'll have to twist that with a tiny little screwdriver, plastic screwdriver, don't use a metal one, and adjust that with a multimeter just to make sure that you get five volts. It's plenty of power for this thing, okay? And it works. Great, okay, so that's the working combination. I'm gonna crack this thing open so you guys can see what's inside of it. If you wanna rebuild this or build something else, go ham. Oh, uh, before I forget, some of you might be real short on USB ports, or um, you might not even have USB internal headers so, for your mini PC. You might need one of these. These are a USB 2.0 dev board. It essentially is everything inside a USB hub, okay? You got your five volts in, ground, D plus, data plus, and data negative, okay? And then that breaks it out into four USB headers around the board, all right? You just search USB hub dev board and you'll find one of these things that normally sell in like packs of two or something. Very useful. I, I'm not using it in this thing, but I was using it in my little laptop over there, which I have to gut because I wanted the four terabyte SSD inside. Yeah, there's 32 gigabytes of RAM and a four terabyte SSD in there because why not overkill? All right. We're going to just clear things out over here and open up the computer so you guys can see what's inside of it. And I wholly recommend to anybody who's like really thrilled about mini PCs or just looking for something fun to do and that's educational, go have fun. Get yourself a little mini computer. They're not crazy expensive like some desktop towers. They're pretty small, handy, and you can use them for a whole bunch of different projects. I think they're adorable. All right. Let's... Turn that off. And if you guys want to see like more stuff, just put it in the comments. Let me know what I can do to entertain. Yeah. There we go. Shut that off. I found out that actually doing this preserves the battery life enormously. Have on and off buttons. Okay. Electric screwdriver. All right. So. I'm not exactly thrilled to do this because now you guys will see what nightmare job of hot glue and electrical tape I did to rearrange everything inside. I, it might not be that bad compared to most uh, cyber decks you, people have seen, you know, but I look at these things and I think to myself, wow, that's a lot of Raspberry Pi. Like, that's a lot of Raspberry Pi. Like, everything, is, or most everything, is Raspberry Pi. And I'm like, dang. I want to run Fusion 360 without running a VM or some creative workaround. I want to run normal Windows, Windows tasks, maybe even play some Steam games on an OS that I'm familiar with. Crunchy. 
So I look at this and say to myself, I got mini PC, I've got a 3D printer. I have very, very basic electrical knowledge. Let's go ham. Yep. All right. All right. Let's disconnect the USB. This is for the touchscreen digitizer. And HDMI. Okay. Oh, wait. You know, that's not how you disconnect the HDMI. You build it yourself, you don't include an instruction manual. That's my favorite thing to do. Yeah, whatever. I'll just leave this off to the side. Get plugged in later. Okay, so this is the inside. Okay, again, there are batteries located around this sucker, like so. Ooh, this is totally safe. Okay, batteries. You got the USB uh, C PD charging module, IP2368. This is a generic BMS. It's cheap, it's small, it charges 4S, or works with 4S, and it does supposedly balancing. It's not really meant to be like a super balancing board, so you get what you pay for here. It was like $2. Yay! Um, yeah, screen controller is encased in electrical tape over here. Yes. And... The rest of the electrical tape over there is for the touch dig digitizer that will sell included with that screen. The screen itself is from Wise Coco. It's an 8.9 inch 2560p by 1600p LCD screen. And well, it, it, they sell them with digitizers to match them. And these are the digitizer control boards. It connects to USB. It's not rocket science. So. All that connects. It looks beautiful. I like how it looks. Um, it accumulates fingerprints like no wonder, but it's easy to clean off. And this is the B-Link Sir 6 inside. I mean, you see the, if I were to lift this off and unscrew everything, you can see the RAM modules underneath and the SSD modules are underneath this heatsink. Temperatures are pretty good because B-Link included this fan here. Thank goodness for that. And there's a giant chunky heatsink on the opposite side. Yeah, that's about it. There, I don't know. This, this is the uh, Bluetooth audio speaker controller. It's just routed right over here with the rest of the power. There isn't too much more to explain here. I thought it was pretty simple. You put batteries, you put the controller, and you put a charger, add speakers, and slap a screen on top of it. The real challenge was reprinting this case a couple times to get the tolerances right once you figure that out you're good all right good luck to everybody building uh their cyber decks out there i do highly recommend b-link products because it's kind of pretty robust robust like i've tortured this thing doing electrical projects and it's still working yeah uh, your mileage might vary okay ciao uh,